maybe there might be a little bit more wiggle room in terms of that risk sentiment having, having dissipated. Does that give the Chancellor a little more space to not make the kind of cuts that he would when it comes to spending and the tax hikes that he needs at this point? Well, he's obviously uh, got himself a tricky line to tread there because he needs to be doing enough as it were, to reassure the markets. And a lot of the market stabilisation we've seen, as you mentioned, Governor Bailey was talking about, uh, is in anticipation of what Jeremy Hunt's going to say today. So he has to follow through, as it were, on some of those, you know, well-trailed kind of announcements. But uh, obviously a feature of today's statement is that it becomes accompanied with an Office for Budget Responsibility statement, which we didn't have in September, and that was half of the problem. Um, and but so a lot of the decisions that will be, be be made today will be based on forecasts in that OBR statement. And of course, a lot of the forecasts are based on highly uncertain outcomes. We don't know what's going to happen in Ukraine, for example. Uh, and there's no doubt that the war in Ukraine is driving a lot of the inflation that we're seeing. Uh, we don't know how long we'll have to have high interest rates for. So there's a lot of uncertainty around those forecasts. And so it could well be that he feels he needs to make deeper cuts as a result of forecasts that actually aren't aren't required, but we are acting in, a, in, a, in an environment of great uncertainty, and so much of that is down to the damage that the Conservative government did with their mini-budget. Yeah, the, the importance then of sending the right message, yes, we've spoken about to the markets, but we have, uh, you know, Britons, Britons just sitting saying to themselves, well, you've made another plan, or you say you're going to make another plan when it comes to the energy crisis, which that, that stimulates and, and that plan sort of ends in April. How big a plan can he make from there on? Because the one that was initially put on was meant to be pro-stimulus, meant to be pro-poor in, in many ways as well. But that seems to be, have gone out the window too. Absolutely. And as I say, their, their, their key goal now is all about stabilizing the markets. They've forgotten about growth. They've forgotten about uh, the, 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 the worst off. And, and that's a real concern. But um, there's no, I feel there's probably a lot of crossed fingers in the Treasury that wholesale gas prices start to come down. We're starting to see that. Uh, we're starting to see that wholesale gas prices are not uh, as high as they were back in the summer. And we're also, obviously, we've had um, a really un unseasonably warm November, which has been, you know, a blessing in a way because it has meant that we've had much less uh, gas usage uh, amongst households than we might otherwise have expected. So that will certainly have reduced the government's liability, as it were, on, on the energy price guarantee. So that might, pr again, provide him with a bit of wiggle room. But we'll certainly be pushing for more help for... Uh, those on the lowest incomes.